Hello and welcome to this new episode in which we're going to work on the authentication guard to uh, restrict access to the uh, dashboard and only authorized or logged in user can access that uh, dashboard so not not all user or not public users and to do that we are going to head over to um, the uh, main module or main routing module and start building the authentication or adding the authentication guard to this route actually so no one is allowed except the users who are, who are already logged in and to do that we will start by introducing the redirect uh, unauthorized to which is a function that comes from uh, angular fire auth guard so we have to import that function redirect and authorized to and this comes from angular fire fire auth guard and we'll use that function to redirect the user to a specific location when the auth guard is detected detecting that the user is not authorized so we'll have to create a function to redirect so redirect to login and that function will just use the redirect and authorized to a specific location in our case it's auth slash sign in so whenever the user tries to access the dashboard we'll try to redirect them back to the sign in page and we have to introduce this into my data of this route so data is a json object and then we'll say auth pipe auth guard pipe and it's going to redirect the user actually to the login so once I, uh, I detect that the user is not authorized, I'll call this function and this function will take care of redirecting the user back to the sign-in page. And of course, I have to introduce the can activate here and use the auth guard from Firebase or from Angular Fire. It's already ready for us, so we don't need to create it ourselves. That's it for the um, uh, authentication guard. So we are going to make sure that we sign out, sign out the user when the user is signed, in, signed out or when the user is signed in. And we're going to make sure that uh, we introduce the information about the user when the user signs in, actually. Now that our authentication guard is ready to go, we are going to introduce a service to resolve the user for us when the user logs in, actually. And to do that, we're going to create a new folder here called service, or you can call it whatever you want. And we're going to introduce a new service there, or a new user resolver that will take care of resolving the user for us. So I will just call it user.resolver.ts. And this is going to host our user resolver. And the user resolver is actually a very basic uh, class that will take care of um, resolving the user for us it's it's kind of a service actually so we'll start building it so we'll say injectable here since it's going to be injected and that is going to be provided into our root provide in it's like a service actually you can always generate that using a service so we provide it into the root and we're going to export the class export class user resolver And this resolver will just implement the uh, resolver of type user. And this user is actually coming from fire and the resolver is coming from actually the rote or the rotor if you want. And this is going to be resolve, actually not resolver. So we'll just do this. And it comes from the rotor shield. And then it will ask us to, I'll just put it here actually. So it'll ask us to implement that. 
and this will just have a method called resolve and this method will be called when we want to resolve the user into our route we'll see later on how it will be used so uh, first we need to create our user and to do that we need to inject the authenticator or the authentication service so inject auth and then we're going to create an observable of type you are uh, user observable view and this is going to be auth state so it'll take care auth state will take care of providing the user when the user is logged in and this will be auth then we're going to pipe to resolve the data once the user is resolved so we'll filter only if the user is not null so user user not null we resolve that information and then we're going to map the user to the valid user actually like this so we'll just introduce the map from rxjs so now our user observable is ready to be consumed so we'll just call it create the user observable and then here we will resolve the user for the uh, uh, rotor if whenever needed so resolve the user data to the rotor when the rotor asks uh, this resolver to resolve the user information we'll just introduce the user observable if you want this dot user observable and this will serve us whenever we need it uh, we need the user information we can just retrieve it from the rotor of our component or of, of our module and to do that we're just getting back to the main module which is the routing module of the app and then we're going to introduce our resolver here so it's going to be resolve user is equal to user resolver so now whenever we want to access the user information we can access it through the uh, this resolver which is the user within the uh, uh, the route of uh, or the routing to that or the route of your uh, your component so i'll show you how i'll just go to the um, main page of our application and try to resolve the user or the authenticated user there and show the information about that authenticated user so let's head over to the home component under the dashboard and resolve or try to get access to the authenticated user basically we need to call uh, the rotor so i have to say private or the road if you would the activated road so private activated road and from this road we're going to retrieve the user that is injected using the resolver actually so activated route and this we will resolve the user or get the user from that route uh, or, or the activated route so get the user from the route which is injected by the user result resolver And to do that we'll just say user of type user from fire and that is going to be equal to this activated route dot snapshot dot data of user so now we can show the information about that user and to do that we'll just head over to the constructor and then show console log the user logged in user is actually user so let's try again and see if i'm able to see the user so when i sign in and then open the console try to locate the user so sign in as you can see my user is resolved already and the user we only have the email and the user id the token and so on so we have 
quite few information about that user because we don't know him or we don't know it because it uses the um, custom username and password. So if we try to sign in with, uh, with a Google account, I at least can determine the display name from Gmail. Actually, we'll see that in a, in a minute. So now we're going to implement uh, showing the username, display name, and email here. So welcome user display name and user.email. And then we're going to handle the uh, sign out. When the user clicks on sign out, we need to sign the user out from the application. So I'll go here and show the user email and username. So welcome display name and email. So now we'll see that my user is already known. So welcome user and uh, at, e at mail.com, which is the user that, uh, that uh, we signed up actually. So now we are going to introduce the sign out and to do that, it's very basic. We are just going to call a method uh, to sign out the user. And that method comes from the, uh, again, the um, fire off. So this method is called sign out. And then we are going to call it when the user clicks on sign out. So on sign out, just do this. And of course, to, to sign out, we need to provide uh, the auth. So let's get the auth service. So auth is equal to inject auth. And this comes from the same fire library. And then we're going to use that auth to sign out the user. So sign out this auth and actually the auth have more information about the user if you'd like to just console log that auth so you can just say this dot auth and you have bench of information name and uh, settings tenant id and many other information that you can retrieve from this or maybe current user can give you the current signed in user if you want so this gives you some information about the user as well so delete display name email so you don't need to use this resolver. If you would like to access the authenticated user, you always can do it through the auth, but this resolves, resolver comes handy sometimes, so you don't need to inject this, and the user will be available to you in, uh, in the snapshot of the router or of the road. So you can use this or uh, either this or the, the other one, both works and depending on your use case scenario. So now let's sign in, sign out the user, so then once the user is signed in, so it's signed out, so we just need to redirect them. And in case of error, we can console log the error. So response. So this is a successful response. I can redirect, so. So I have to inject the rotor to redirect. And this is the rotor to navigate back to the sign in component. So this rotor dot navigate to auth sign in or maybe redirect the user to the main page. Doesn't matter actually. And then we're going to catch error in case there are errors. Then we're going to console error to show the error message that we received from the sign out method error occurred. And then we show the error. So that's it. Now I'll just use this method whenever the user clicks on the sign out. So click sign out and that's it. So let's go back and try this functionality and make sure when we sign out, we are no longer able to go back to the dashboard. So let's sign out, all good. So now let's try to go to the dashboard and see if it, the guard at least works. So as you can see, I'm always redirected back to the authentication and I'm not allowed to go to the dashboard at all. So I have to log in before I can go to the dashboard. So now I'll try to log in with Google and see if I'm able to uh, like go to the dashboard. So I'll just click on login with Google since I already have an account there. So as you can see, all the full name of my Google account displayed and 
the email as well. So because they have some information in Gmail account, so they are automatically shown here because I, uh, I have logged in as a user. So now I can sign out, I can sign in with that same user. If I put a wrong password, it will warn me. So the invalid password and username. So I'll just go and delete that. I can sign in, I can sign out, I can sign up. So all the functionality are ready to go. Now, the only thing that is left is the login or the forgot password. So we can uh, work on this in the next episode. Before we wrap this episode out, we will talk about how Firebase store the user credential or the user token, if you would, so that it remains always logged in or signed in to your application until you decide to sign out. So Firebase actually creates some kind of um, storage within your application browser or your application localhost, which is your PC. And those information are stored within your session of the browser. So to locate those information, so as you can see, we can always refresh here and it won't really go out. So you, you are not really signed out. So you always can access this dashboard no matter what you do until you sign out. And then you try to dash, dashboard again, go to dashboard again. So you will not be able because you already decided to sign out. So now let's sign in again and see how actually the information are stored when the user signs in to your application. And to do that, you just need to go to the application tab. So I'll make this a little bit bigger, bigger so that we see the application tab. And it's actually here. And then when you, when you, when you are at the application tab, you can go to the index DB section. And then from the index DB section, you can see that Firebase have two entry there. So one of them is the heartbeat uh, database and the other one is local storage database. So, this local storage actually hosts the information about the authenticated user. As you can see here, you have the user ID and let's just make this bigger. And then you have the email and some other information like the photo a URL, um, uh, the API key, Firebase key, and so on. So all these information are stored for you at least with the token and then the refresh token as well. So the access token here and the refresh token. So you might need these information later on in your application to make some kind of authorization and some user authorized to access some section within your application, other users are not authorized. So and based on this token, you will be able to do that by introducing what we call claims to the user. So user will have some claims in Firebase database and based on that claims, we can decide. So we can validate the access token against uh, the Firebase, let's say, endpoint, and then it will re re redirect us or to give us an, an, the answer. So this is admin or not, this is a regular user or not, and we need just to send this token here, and that's it. So yeah, that's that's how actually uh, Firebase stores the information. So now when I refresh, it's always going to remain there until I decide to remove it. So once I remove this from here, this entry, so my user will be will be logged off. So I'll, I'll try to log off from here, sign out, and refresh this from here to see that my user information are gone. So I'll just click on refresh. As you can see, the user information are removed from that uh, storage. And when I try to go to the dashboard, it won't work because I already signed out. So if I try to sign in again, so same thing. So I refresh here, you can see my information are brought back. And if even if I delete them from here, and I try to refresh, so my user is signed out. So that's how actually the uh, application retains the information about the signed in user and keep it along the application session until you decide to log off or you close your browser session. And that's where it will clear this information from Firebase local storage. That's it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll focus on uh, the reset password functionality. And the reset password, we'll use the uh, reset pa password using a, a link that is sent to the e user email. And from that link, the user will be allowed to uh, change the password and log, log in again in case password is changed. Stay tuned and thank you for watching.